Life can be a real struggle, can't it? We uh, wake up in the morning and we hit the snooze button and we don't want to get up. At least we tell ourselves we don't want to get up and we wish we could just stay in bed and sleep. That's a lot of us. And some people seem to have this internal clock and they just hop out of bed. They don't need an alarm. I used to think that that was because of the way my body was, that I just needed more sleep. These other people didn't need that sleep. And, and I recently started looking into this and came upon a book that has been helping me change my mornings. Many of you know I have an Instagram account. And on Instagram, sometimes they try to advertise things to you. And I'm a sucker for, for journals. I have a stack of journals that are empty uh, that I've collected over the years. I always thought, well, if I buy this nice journal, I'll write in it. Finally, I'll finally start writing in it. And then I would think, you know, journaling is so silly. It's not my thing. Like, why would I, why would I waste time journaling? If I'm going to write, I need to work on my book. I'd keep reading things. Once in a while, I'd pick up a self-help book and try it out or think, oh, that sounds, that sounds great. Okay, I'll read that. Let's see if any of that sinks in. Now I'm thinking about when does something go from being an idea to an action. I hadn't given a lot of thought to any processes or, you know, how, how to make that happen other than reading it and knowing it and thinking, okay, I know it. The difference between knowing something and actually incorporating it into an action is huge. As self-aware as many of us try to be, we can actually delude ourselves a bit and think that we are someone or presenting ourselves as someone when really we have not succeeded in doing that and other people are perceiving us in a different way. Especially when you are trying to change some things in your life or change some things about yourself to become a kinder person or a more supportive person to your friends and family. It's really difficult not to pick up on so many things that are happening around you in society, you know, um, in things you read or just, and, and sadly, you know, people who may be closest to you. Uh, they may have some habits or ways of handling things that are that are not healthy. It can be really easy to fall into a trap, which is of our own making, where we copy these behaviors or we behave in a similar manner that's when we get caught up in a cycle of blame because if we are hurt by something someone does what sense does it make to turn around and do something similar maybe we get a little bit of a feeling out of it because we're hurt but in the end I think that it takes more than that to be, <laughs> I mean, definitely we have to give ourselves more than that, don't we? And we need to keep our values in alignment in our own minds. And if we don't do that, I think we feel that deficit. And it comes, uh, it comes to us in the form of depression or anxiety or, you know, just not being able to focus, not being able to live to our potential. 
And a lot of this stuff, you know, has sounded like hype to me. So I've tried to take what I really felt I needed or what was more concrete and use that. But I haven't ever found anything that really worked for me uh, in all of those self-help, you know, anything, anything, psychology even, you know, how am I going to improve my life? And the decades just keep ticking by. None of us get younger. I mean, we're all aging. How many decades does it take before we figure some of this stuff out? Do some of us ever really figure it out? Maybe most of us. I'm no different from, from anyone else who's out there struggling to try and find, I mean, you can call it a life's purpose. I need to do this thing before I die. Am I doing that thing? And what is stopping me from doing that thing? I don't want to be in a trap. So on Instagram, of course, there was a sad advertisement for this journal, um, the Morning Sidekick Journal. And this is by Habit Nest. And so that is something that I have been working on. And what I love about it it's supposed to help you figure out, you know, what time in the morning you're going to wake up and what is important to you that day and what tasks you're going to complete in the morning. So in the beginning, you know, you read a lot about how hard those days ahead are going to be and to not become, uh, become uh, discouraged. And it guides you so that you can um, go through, you know, like your first week, they call it hell week, when you're teaching your, your mind to retrain itself and, and not discourage you and tell you to... There are like daily challenges and a morning ritual, and so you set the morning ritual the night before. I started with this, and I felt discouraged a number of times. It actually took me a month to complete the first week. And I really liked the language that they use in this journal where they don't they don't they don't necessarily tell you you don't feel like a failure when you don't do things perfectly. And maybe I was just ready and at a point where I could forgive myself for not being perfect. Because so many times in the past when I have set out to do something I would end up dropping it because I felt like I wasn't doing it perfectly and it was maybe too hard or just not for me. And a lot of it just had to do with not getting myself to follow through. I realize now that a lot of these challenges arise from childhood and from not having a routine in childhood. And it makes perfect sense, you know, if you're, your household is chaos, you, you barely get up in the morning, you know, your parents pretty much drag you out of bed at the last minute because they dragged themselves out of bed at the last minute. There's no routine. It's just a hurry to get outside and make it to school on time, you know. I mean, forget breakfast. N nobody cares, you know, whether you brush your teeth or anything, you know, you just try to look a little presentable and out the door you go, you realize that you never really learned and your brain never developed, you know, those schemas for a kind of routine or to establish any kind of social ritual in the morning or any kind of ritual. So how would you be expected? Unless something happened in your life, you know, that you developed that through you know, your peers or something, how would you, how would you make that connection? It, it's, it's amazing to me sometimes the connections that I have made and then the connections that I have not made that seem so obvious. And I've, you know, I'm like, okay, all these decades have gone by. Why did I not figure this out? So the morning sidekick journal, at some point, it recommended this book by Hal Elrod, called The Morning Miracle. 
and this is uh, things that you do before 8 a.m. So I've been getting up at 5. I have three hours in the morning before 8 where I do things like I drink water, I read, I and I exercise. It's it's amazing. I I got to tell you I I really thought that I would be so tired if I woke up hours earlier. And my my sleep schedule before, sometimes I would stay up till 3 in the morning. It just varied. There was no real routine to it. No real bedtime, no no set time to get up in the morning. It would depend on how late I stayed up. And how late I stayed up would depend on how meandering I was the night before. So then if I needed to get up early, it was hard. But I can tell you that it was relatively easy once I set my mind to it. Having this extra time, I think it's very important. Especially, I mean, at any time in your life. But I'm finding that at my age... It's giving me that feeling that I have more time and I'm getting more time under my belt, you know, because I'm not, I'm not sleeping an extra three hours or four hours, you know, and sometimes I wouldn't wake up until nine. By that time, you know, I was kind of dragging. So by the time I exercised and got everything done on those days, it could be noon. I mean, that's just, it's kind of ridiculous. That's what I've been working on in the time that I've been absent from YouTube. I will definitely be continuing this and moving forward and making more and more and more of it. I, I know that this is going to help me in a lot of areas. I've been fighting a lot of um, anxiety and, and depression and just a lot of, I've had a lot of struggles in my life. Um, I mean, just in general, but then in recent years, it's been kind of a different kind of struggle. I've had to find my own way through kind of a mess, and it's been really hard because I have to find the good in something. Because the message may not be delivered to me in a positive way. So I, I have heard a lot of negative. It has really affected me. And I have struggled to try and overcome that and to stand up, you know, on my own two feet. And trust myself that I'm going to be okay, that I can do this, that I'm, that I'm not this thing or that thing. It's really hard to not take to heart what another person says, especially if in your earlier life you were on the receiving end of someone else's fury or unhappiness, just their misery and their depression and all of this and their circumstances, and they put all of that on you. You can go through life thinking that it's your fault, and that you are worthless. It's such a hard concept, you know, because you can look in the mirror and you can try to see good things about yourself and your friends will tell you good things about yourself. Lots of people might tell you, but you don't see it and you don't, you just hear these other words. They're always there, creeping into your mind. It's really been a struggle for me to find in myself someone who I can trust, who can tell me the truth and be realistic, you know, not at one extreme end or the other. You know, I'm not buttering myself up or, you know, inflating something and not harshly jabbing at myself or scolding myself that another person can do that to me of their own accord and I'm not going to take it in. It's up to me to protect myself. But in the end, we did it ourselves.
And it's very hard, you know, to attribute um, credit to people when they do things in a negative way. You know, like if you have that overbearing parent who's always, you know, telling, you know, kind of scolding you and, and telling you, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, or kind of trying to, to rule that, rule your life with a kind of intimidation, maybe. In the end, you look back and you're grateful. You might be able to say, well, okay, this helped me that they were like that, but will you really feel that they did it in kindness and will you really feel good about it? Because in the end, you made those changes.